So, wildflowers. Where did your interest in wildflowers come? Late in life or early in life? Very, very early in life. Um, I started botanising when I was about three uh, with my dad, who was an amateur botanist. And um, we, there were quite sweet photos of me, actually, sort of pottering around, always picking flowers, which was not very popular with mm -hmm. my father, who was more of a plantsman. Um, and, but, but divided in, in really two main, or perhaps three main places. I, I was brought up in Cambridge, or just outside Cambridge, because my father was an academic at the university. And so we, we spent lots of weekend forays going to places like the Fritillary Meadows, um, which there are in Suffolk, and the Pulsatilla Heath of the Chalklands, just outside Royston, and lovely woods with oxlets, incredible carpet, um, carpets of oxlets, also in Cambridgeshire. But also, I spent a lot of my holidays on the west coast of Scotland, so I had this sort of chalky life in the south, and then this acid life in the north, because my mum had a farm up there, um, and so a lot of mountain flowers. And then, because my father was an academic, we always went to Italy um, every second year for the Easter holidays for a month. And there, I suppose in a way, I found the more glamorous things, lots of orchids and irises. And so it was from a very early age that I was very keen. Yeah, but I mean, Cambridge and heading east, I mean, there's lots of wetland uh, wildflowers of, of, of particular interest to you. Yeah, the fenlands and stuff, definitely, um, although in, in a way, maybe less than the, the real dramatic beauties. I, I think I am quite an orchid, a sort of pretty flower freak, perhaps. I love the flowering rush, which you get in wetlands, but I think I am a bit of a, a, a wildflower fascist, and I don't like the little brown blobs. Um, <laughs> and my dad was forever kind of, he was very, very tall when he was six foot four, and um, was always sort of stooped looking, he was always looking for these minute, really dull little things, because he was a proper botanist. And I like the big, flowery, colourful things, and I've stayed like that, I'm afraid. <laughs> but I mean, I presume as you were growing older, did you lose interest because of teenage, teenage things? Boys, boys, yeah. I was going to say that, but thank you. Um, <laughs> sort of about 15, 16, um, I definitely, like my dad would, uh, I went away to school for the sixth form, and my dad would turn up saying, come on, we're going botanising. I'm just like, oh no, <laughs> I didn't want to. But um, he then very sadly died quite soon after that. And so then uh, it went into abeyance, really, until I had small children. And I started, um, because I work quite hard, I do tend to go abroad for holidays because otherwise I tend to work if I'm at home. Um, and so we went to Italy again and, and Greece and, and I just suddenly realised that it was sort of one of the greatest pleasures in my life really was, was just going off for a walk and finding wonderful things in the spring. And I, and I sort of, my children got slightly hooked into it too and, and it's really built since then. I mean, as you said, the photographs are beautiful in here, and in fact, there were photographs of bindweed, and I'd forgotten how beautiful the flower yes. of bindweed is. Yes, it, it, that particular plant, I remember, um, we found it, it was amazing, um, down in uh, Kynance Cove in Cornwall. And it was, honestly, it was, it was more beautiful than the honeysuckle, and um, we were sort of blown away by it. And in the right place, exactly, bindweed is, 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 is wonderful. It's just through great, great um, scrubby um, blackthorn, which is slow. And uh, yeah, it did look great. But that's right. And um, I, I, but I'm not, you know, a, a, a sort of Bob Flagg, you uh, love every single plant as much um, <laughs> a sort of character. You know, I think plants do have their right place. And I don't want things that self sow too much in yeah. my garden. Yeah. Can I just a little bit about you? I, I think I'm right in saying that you, did, you studied history at Edinburgh and then you studied to be a doctor in London. How did you get from there to your massive interest in? in Garden and the countryside in all its forms. I had children, basically. Ah. <laughs> and um, the thing is, with women in medicine, when I trained, uh, which is now 20 years ago, well, I qualified 20 years ago, uh, we, were, we, were, we were doing 75 hour, 80 hour weeks. And um, you can imagine that with a tiny baby, it just, it just wasn't going to work. Because um, I trained late to be a medic because I'd done history before. So Rosie, who's now 18, um, was, was born. Um, when I was doing an 80 hour week. So I then went half time and extended my training and I was still doing a 45 hour week. So I was doing, you know, I was doing twice as much training as everybody else, yeah. but I was still doing a 45 hour week. And also I got terribly homesick. I think once you've had children and you've sort of, you're more settled in your life, the, the sort of glamour of the, of the doctor's mess um, it wasn't quite as appealing as my own bed and my own kind of life. And so I'm afraid medicine went out the window. Mm. 
why does chalk dandy produce such fantastic wildflowers? It's it's basically if you think about it, chalk. If you garden on chalk, it, it's um it's very impoverished soil, and so you're, you're always having to add organic matter to create a garden on chalk. And what the result of that, if you don't do that, is that you get very very poor growing of grasses. And so the big, robust sort of cocksfoot and um, Italian ryegrass and the big, strong, robust grasses, they, they really falter and they actually fade away. And what happens is that you get the very fine leaf grasses, things like um, qu quaking grasses and sheep's fescue, as I mentioned, and crested dog's tail. Now they have very thin, almost chive-like foliage, not these big, um, sort of almost like iris-like foliage, and they allow the, um, they create a much more open sward. And so what happens is if a wildflower seed drifts in, it can actually stand a chance and get its roots down and get its leaves out. And it actually is as strong a grower as the grass, so it gets away. And that is exactly why on, on an impoverished chalky soil you get the most incredibly rich variation of flowers. Also why they tend to be earlier in the year, so afterwards you want to head for chalk, because of course with that it bakes very early in the year. And so if we have a dry summer, like this summer has been absolutely hopeless for orchids, whereas last summer when I did most of the photography it was wonderful, because it was wetter in the spring. Um, and, but that is really why you get such incredible diversity and richness on chalk.